Muhammad, peace be upon his soul. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From among all the prophets, Muhammad was the last, as his was a mission of the greatest task. There was only moral degeneration. People clung to idol adoration. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين ورحمة الله للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. All the praise and all the glory is due to Allah. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger. May the blessings and peace of Allah be upon our prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. His family his companions, and those who followed his path up to the day of judgment. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome back to a new episode of The Prophet Teaches, where we set light on the source of light. And we underline statements of guidance of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In today's episode, we are talking about a key and important element in our characters and in our past in this life, which is the way of a change, the prophetic way of changing people, how to change our service, what is the Islamic way of forming this type of change. Uh, I would like actually also to invite all of you to join us through your questions on the phones, you can call us at 002-0238-555-248 or 249. You can also send us emails at our email, prophetteaches at hoda.tv. And you can also send your comments and your inquiries at the Facebook page page which is the prophet teaches you can also communicate to us through the uh, skype as it is shown on the screen let us at the beginning try to read the hadith under discussion and this is not a well-known hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and then we try to shed light on how to benefit from this hadith We'll read the hadith in Arabic and it's a translation and then try to elicit and understand some of its insights and some of the spotlights included in this hadith. The hadith reads as follows. An Abi Hurayrata radiyallahu anhu qal, qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, innama al-ilmu bit-ta'allum. والحلم بالتحلم ومن ومن يت ومن يقصد الخير يعطه ومن يتوقش ومن يتوقع الشر يوقه رواه الدارقطني في الأفراد وحسنه الألباني. The hadith is as follows in English and on the authority of Abi Huraira. May Allah be pleased with him. Who said, the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Indeed, knowledge is acquired through learning, and patience is obtained by training oneself to be patient. Whosoever sincerely seeks after goodness will obtain it, and whoever protects himself against evil will be saved from it. The hadith is reported by Ad-Dara Qutni and it is graded as authentic hadith by Imam Al-Albani. If we concentrate on this hadith, the main topic it doesn't talk about 
the importance of acquiring knowledge or the significance of patience in our daily life. It doesn't talk about the importance of avoiding evil and sincerely seeking after goodness and righteousness. In fact, the main topic of this hadith is, it, it gives us a hint about the capability and the possibility of changing oneself. The Messenger وسلم, gives us an example and a statement, a strong statement that a person can change. A person who is impatient can change his habit to be a patient person. An ignorant or a person who, is, who lacks knowledge can acquire knowledge and illuminate his heart and spread this knowledge in his life. Which means that a person who lacks a character can easily acquire it by training himself and putting in himself the intention of changing himself. And this is a very important, a very important statement. Since most of us and a lot of people, they, when they have a habit, when they do in their daily life, they think that they are in the correct path and they do not believe that they make mistakes. And that after it is so difficult for them to change themselves. For example, a person who lacks the talent of forbearing and patience, he is easily irritated. He becomes angry easily. Is that person apt to change? Yes, according to the Islamic rule, it, it can change. He can change himself. Because the Prophet ﷺ admitted in this hadith that those characteristics and those manners and behaviors are not built in the character. They are not a part of the genes. Uh, it, it, they are not a part of the person's components. He can change himself and he, once he realizes and he recognizes that he is incorrect. We call it in Islam what is commonly known as Tajdeed al-Iman. What is the meaning of Tajdeed al-Iman? It is reviving Iman in our hearts. Reviving Iman in our hearts means that uh, analyzing ourselves, holding ourselves under accountability, and trying to correct our mistakes. Ibn Taymiyyah himself, he said, uh, he spent 20 years correcting his Iman, correcting his vision, Correcting his way of looking at things. In most of cases, and most of the mistakes that we commit in our daily life, they emanate and they come basically from the fact that we do not realize that we are mistaken. We do not realize that we do not act according to the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves and likes from us. And I will give you an example which happened to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When a sahabi, a companion came to him and he said, O oh, messenger of Allah, I can avoid all these sins, all sins with the exception of fornication. I cannot give up fornication. So the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he cannot change. He admitted that he cannot change himself. So the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam approached him nicely and he said, do you like it for your, for your sister? Do you like it for your mother? So the Prophet ﷺ put the hated and the disliked picture in the mentality of this man. So he accepted him as is, but he tried to correct him by putting some, uh, what you can call inputs, to change his character. And afterwards he said, no, I cannot accept it for my brother, I, I cannot accept it for my sister, I cannot accept it for my aunt, I cannot accept it for my mother. So the Prophet ﷺ said, so why do you accept it for the other, the, for the other sisters, for the other's mother? So the, the Prophet ﷺ tried to handle this man. And we saw a lot of examples of how the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, it changed it. I, I cannot say that it is a static change, it is dynamic and what you can call it's drastic change, big strides in their characters. You see, for example, Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, uh, I, I will just give you a picture of how strong was he. Umar ibn al-Khattab, once a woman passed by him and she had a miscarriage out of the strong character that Umar ibn al-Khattab had. Even when the Prophet ﷺ was in his masjid 
and the female companions were asking the Prophet Sallallahu some questions and they were raising their voices. When they saw Umar ibn al-Khattab, they kept silent because they had so much respect and our, what you can call fear from Umar. So when they kept silent, he said, Woe to you, you are afraid of Umar and you do not hold the Prophet Sallallahu in such a high esteem. This is the character of Umar. And the Prophet Sallallahu talked about him that he is a man that if, he, if the shaitan sees him taking a path, he leaves that path and he takes the other one. It means that he's a very strong man in his Iman and even in his character. But I, I, I can move you to another scenery of the character of Umar ibn al-Khattab. May Allah be pleased with him. When a child was talking to his fellows and saying, do you like to see the tears of Umar ibn al-Khattab? Umar ibn al-Khattab in this situation, he is the commander of the faithful. He is on the head of the Muslim, I, not, I cannot say Muslim state, it's the Muslim empire, which extends from east to west, from north to south, great empire. The child says to his friends, do you like to see the tears of Umar ibn al-Khattab? They say, yes. And the child grabs Umar from his garment and says to him, ittaqillaha ya Umar. Fear Allah, Umar. This is just a word which is stated by one child. And Umar ibn al-Khattab sheds the tears. This is the type of change in the character of the Sahaba Ridwanullah Ta'ala alayhim. Now when you tell somebody, fear Allah, ittaqillah, uh, he cannot understand this situation. He cannot uh, put that in the, the proper context of how to hold the Qur'an in high esteem, to hold the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in great respect. When you tell somebody, you must quit, quit drinking because it is prohibited. You should not actually trade in khamr, in wine, in alcoholic drinks, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a clear message and a clear ayah command and a provision in the Qur'an. فَجْتَنِبُوا he cannot change that. He cannot respond. Why? What is the reason behind it? Basically because we do not, first of all, understand our mistakes. Number two, we do not change it from inside. We do not look at things from a different perspective. From the perspective of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the perspective of the true, real value of this life. We exaggerate the value of this life and we hold this is the whole thing and this is the reason. That's why the first step of a change, it's not because some people nowadays, they call for what you can call dramatic change in their states through revolutions. I, cannot, I do not discuss actually the permissibility or the impermissibility of revolutions, but I need to make those people recognize and realize that change does not come through the head of the pyramid. The change comes from the whole people, the laymen. All people must change. They must, they must have a revolution against the evil habits, the evil morals. As I actually repeated so many times, light does not come through the lotions that you put in your own face. The light in Islam comes out from the heart itself. When you have tranquility and peace of mind and acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being pleased with Allah, this is reflected on the mercy which overflows in your face, which overflows in your actions. This is the reason that there is a close relation between prayers and action, between Iman and action. Because a lot of people, they believe that just saying La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, praying five times uh, a day, fasting during the months of Ramadan, going to the Kaaba, making Hajj every year, that's enough. And this is the case. No, these are just the apparent actions. But this is, it must be reflected in a deep will, a deep intention to change yourself and to keep yourself to the straight path. 
the question which raises itself now, how should I change? First of all, we need to understand that the, according to the hadith of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, patience is acquired, is something which I can train myself to be patient. Knowledge is acquired. This is, <laughs> this is a talent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the conviction of some Sufi sects, they believe that knowledge is showered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through specific practices. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the cause behind all good actions. But we need to admit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated to the Prophet sallallahu and commanded him to seek knowledge. And he commanded him to read. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam to recite the Quran to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam and to teach him. And he sent also Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam to the companions. And the way of our righteous ancestors is that they seek knowledge and they try to improve themselves. So first of all, we must realize that the change is possible. Number two, Iman, faith in our heart. This is a very important element. If you would like to change your child, if you would like to change your wife, if you would like to change yourself, first of all, you must raise the element or the level of awareness and the level of Iman, awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and consciousness. This is a very important element. This is the reason, as you know, that uh, Sayyidah Aisha, uh, may Allah be pleased with her, talked about it. Sayyidah Aisha said a very eloquent statement. She said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first revealed ayat or verses which prohibit drinking, prohibit theft, which prohibit fornication, people would never quit drinking and fornication. But first, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the verses of the short surahs at the end of the Mus'haf, which you talk about the garden of paradise, about Jannah and hellfire. So the hearts stabilized, feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The dignity, the respect, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was planted in those hearts and that helped people to change. I'm going to give you a lot of examples of how the Sahaba, when they felt and touched upon that, the sweetness of that Iman, change became very easy for them. We'll talk about it, inshallah, after having this short break. Leave you for a short time and meet you again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Tech Talk We're going to look how to create a website and which Islamic websites to actually visit. What inspired you to create your own website? One of the challenges mm. that we, we, we face every day the site or the, the application should be accessible worldwide. I remember uh, when I was younger um, uh, one of my friends uh, asked me to, to convince his father to, to get him a, a desktop. Even, even the laptop, uh, when, when you come, if you compare both of them in terms of uh, cost, uh, laptop roughly um, cost twice the money if you, if, you, if you compare it with the desktop. Hackers, the word hackers, most of uh, the young the youth people are very interesting about that word. They say, hey, I'd like to be a hacker because there is a type of hacker Great, doing great job. We call them a uh, white hat hacker. Dear viewers, HODA programs can be watched in the English section of the in flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back. Relax and enjoy watching Hoda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back 
to the prophet teaches. Change. Change is very important. A change is the key of the whole life of all the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. I remind you of calling us at 002-0238-555-248 or 249. You can also send us emails at the email that you see on the screen. And also you can communicate to us through the Facebook, through your own comments. I mentioned to you that the Aisha anha, said that Iman is the delimiter and this is a criterion by which we can measure the type of a change that we have. She said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet وسلم, ayat which he talks about the hereafter, about the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the Jannah, the garden of paradise and the hellfire. So the hearts felt the situation, the value of this life, so change became very easy to them. I remember in 1939, the United States, for example, passed the bill to prohibit drinking. So it, it spread everywhere that alcoholic drinks are banned, and they tried to enforce the law doing that. But unfortunately, after four years, they discovered that it cost them double and triple because of, you know, a lot of trafficking in, in a hidden way. And it became so difficult for them to enforce the law. And they failed and it returned it back. I, I can't compare it. It's, it's a total failure and now in the West and everywhere. And you see the amount of accidents, the amount of social problems and social corruption, which results only from wine, from drinking alcoholic drinks. So in Islam, it causes, it causes the, the whole community of Medina of the Prophet it's just a statement, an ayah. إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنصَابُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ رِجْسٌ مِّنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَاجْتَنِبُوا Wine, gambling, and so and so are ridges are evil, so avoid them. The word avoid them, it changed the whole community. I'm just giving you, it's, it was not easy for the Arabs to quit drinking. If you read their poems, if you read their books, it is filled with hundreds of just names for wine. They used to hem the praise of wine. They used actually to talk elaborately in their prose, in their poetry, in their books, in their discourses. It became built in in their bloods. They can never ever live without wine. It, it was a part of their sessions, a part of their social lives. It was a part of their own blood. It was a habit of the Arabs themselves. So just by saying, avoid it, they quit. And Anas ibn Malik pictured it for us. He said, the people were walking in Medina and they found it's like rivers flowing because of wine which was spilled. The people once heard the person announcing in Medina, Allah has prohibited wine. They responded to that immediately without any discussions. This is what you can call the readiness of changing oneself. The Arabs, they used actually, for example, not to wear hijab. And this is, this is the, the, the example of wine is given to a lot of brothers and sisters who smoke. A lot of brothers and sisters who still drink. A lot of brothers and sisters who may trade in alcoholic drinks. A lot of brothers and sisters who take drugs. A lot of brothers and sisters who neglect some of the rituals of Islam. This is a strong message for them. It's, it's high time to quit. It's high time to free yourself from the slavery of the shaitan and its fellows. Another example and it's given to the sisters who do not wear hijab. You remember the story which is reported by Aisha radiallahu anha when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah of hijab. And they didn't have any chance to take hijab and to dress it immediately. 
they cut their own clothes into pieces and they cover their heads and their faces. It is something which is amazing. The speed, the quick response to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How did they galvanize their hearts to just feel that whatever pleases Allah should please me? Whatever doesn't believe Allah, doesn't please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a part of me. Some people, they think that wearing hijab is impossible for them. But nowadays, you can see a lot of singers, a lot of pop singers and dancers, <laughs> well-known celebrities everywhere. And they quit everything for the sake of Allah when they accepted Islam. They quit drinking. They quit the girl and boyfriends. They quit all the illicit and all the haram unlawful relations. It means that change is easy insha'Allah if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy but it relies on the grid of your iman that you must actually improve in your heart and this is you can see a lot of sahaba عليهم, who practice that you know there is Sa'ad ibn Mu'az you know, the name of Sa'ad ibn Mu'az is amazing in the history of Islam. Why? Sa'ad ibn Mu'az accepted Islam when he was 30 years old. And he died when he was 36. But there is something which is attractive, something which grasps attention in the personality of Sa'ad. Sa'ad is the only person that the mighty throne of Allah shaked when he died. Can you imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his angels, his power, his strength, his mighty throne is shaken for just a slave of him, just a normal person. It's, it may be like you, me, any person, a very normal person who just spent six years as a Muslim. What did this man perform it for the sake of Allah? And for the sake of this religion, even the Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba, saw him grabbing his garment and walking easily. And they asked him, why do you do that, O Messenger of Allah? And he said, Wallahi, I see 70,000 angels came from the heavens to proceed in the funeral prayer of Sa'd ibn Mu'ath. He is so worthy in the eyes of Allah to that extent? Yes. He, what about his history? He was a disbeliever. He, he was not a Muslim. He accepted Islam and he changed it. This is the type of readiness when a person puts in his heart and in his mind that he loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger things becomes easy for him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes things easy for him. Uh, Abdullah ibn Rawaha, for example, that's why I'm, I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, and this is a sincere advice, that change is not by just praying and fasting and seeing you wearing white uh, thawb and jilbab and going here and there and having nice siwak, alhamdulillah, and praying on time in masjid and saying, Jazakallah khairan, Jazakumullah khairan. No, this is not the type of a change that we crave after. It's, it's a dramatic look at everything. So when you, you go here in this wedding and you see women who are semi-naked or naked, your heart starts feeling shaked. No, this is not the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. This is not a place that they should stay in. When you see people drinking, no, this is not my place. My place is the masjid. My place is to stand reciting the Quran. This is not the way that Allah loves. This is not, these are not the type of friends that Allah likes. These are not the type of habits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes me to see. So this is a very important to change the glasses by which you look at things. To change the heart by which you feel about things. You change the tongue by which you speak about things. Abdullah ibn Rawaha is a companion of the Messenger. 
He is one of the four leaders who joined the battle of Mu'tah. If you read about this battle, please underline it and read about it in the history of Islam. And the Messenger وسلم, appoint four leaders to take the emblem of the slogan of war at the time. And one of them was Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. And you know the story of Ja'far? Ja'far actually, one of the sinners in the battle that he took the slogan with his right hand. So this, the disbelievers cut off the hand. He did not he did not stop. He did not say that I'm sick. I cannot. I cannot continue. I, I have to, to put something on my blood. I have to keep, not, to keep the blood not running. No. He took it with the left hand. They also cut off the left hand. He took, he has no hands. He took the slogan with his own soldier, with his own shoulders. He, he kept it, the word of Allah, to be high until they pierced him with a lot of arrows and he fell down. And the Prophet ﷺ took to the Sahaba about him and said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced him with two wings by which he is flying in the Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced him with those temporal hands and feet, hands and arms that he had in this dunya with eternal wings in the Jannah of Allah. How did Ja'far regard it as easy for him to sacrifice his life and to sacrifice his hands, to sacrifice his arm for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There is an example of Abdullah ibn Rawaha. May Allah be pleased with him. And Abdullah ibn Rawaha, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that his you know that there are two people before him who received the martyrdom is Ja'far ibn Abi Talib and Zayd. So the Prophet ﷺ said, but Abdullah ibn Rawaha's position in the Jannah is little bit late, is little bit lower than the position of Ja'far and Zayd. And, and, and Zayd. So they asked why, what is the reason that he is now? He said because he felt a little bit hesitant. And taking the carriage of sacrificing himself. What is the story of Abdullah ibn Rawaha? Abdullah ibn Rawaha was in the arena of war and he started to, he, he wanted to, he started to take the slogan of war, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. And then he felt that he must take off the horse. He must leave the horse and throw himself in the middle of the enemies. It was, it is what you can call a suicide. It's similar to suicide. If you, if you sacrifice the whole of your life and you leave the right and you throw yourself in the place where you are shoot, you are extreme, definitely you are going to be killed. So he felt a little bit hesitant. And then when he felt about the greatness of martyrdom and this situation, what did he say? He talked to himself. He started to talk about, uh, you know, when somebody talks to himself, when somebody tries to discuss a matter between him and himself, he said to himself those words, O oh myself, uh, I swear by, by Allah in you that you live the right now. Either voluntarily or by force, I'm going to force you to leave your right. And then he addressed himself and said, Why I'm seeing you hating the Jannah? Why I'm seeing you keeping yourself away from the position in Jannah? Oh, myself, you are silly. Oh, myself, you are stupid to that extent. I see, I smell the fragrance of Jannah in front of me, and I see you running away from the Jannah, you must leave your position and go. Go ahead. And then he addressed himself and said, Oh, I realized that you love your women. And he said, I divorced my women. He said, No, no, no. You love the slaves that you have. Such and such and such and such are free. 
Oh, no, I realize that you love the piece of land. This is a type of attachment to the dunya. This is a type of love for the dunya which keeps a person from the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said, yes, this land is given or donated for the sake of Allah. And then he threw himself and he was killed. Can you imagine a person who loves this life to that extent? Many he just sacrifice himself in just a blink of an eye. It is something which is amazing. It is something which is unbelievable. This is the type of change that the Sahaba had. That's why they did not only give up their habits, their evil and bad habits. They did not give up the haram. They gave up the love of this dunya, the attachment to this life, this is the reason that we found out that change is easy in the eyes of those people. Talking about change because we are on the steps of Ramadan, the true month of a change, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among people who easily change among people who easily respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll continue inshallah after having this short break. Stay with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Ask Hoda. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new edition of Ask Hoda. I have two questions. Please go ahead. You can read it in Arabic and you can also understand the meaning in your own language. The different tafsir and interpretation of the meanings of the Quran uh, are available in almost every language that exists on earth by the grace of Allah. The water of Zamzam is for whatever intention you drink it with. Salih from Egypt. His father has the way, and he asked about how can he help him. Very good question. Can they give a zakat to any of the Gawa sisters? The ibadah or the act of worship is a part of the unity of worship. It has to be paid to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in accordance with the guidance of his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa for everyone. Three, two, one. What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? As the firefighter uses what to control fire? Water or rocks? Now these two teams go head to head on pulling the blue rope. Now if one person goes over this line right here, the other team loses. Very simple rules. This challenge is worth five points. What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up? What will I be when I grow up as a Muslim man? Fun is for everyone. So get ready to have some fun. Check out these cool competitions between kids. It's important to have fun, and it's also important to be a good sport. So tune in to Fun for Everyone. You what don't want to miss it. When I grow up? What will I be when I grow up as a Muslim man? The greatest of prophets, Islam was his only goal. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the last segment of the Prophet Teaches where we talk about change. Stay with us and try to call us for any questions or any inquiries at the phone numbers that you see on the screen. And you can also communicate us through the email or through the Facebook. So in conclusion, to easily change, number one, a person must be aware that he is incorrect. Number two, raising the Iman to facilitate the shaft. Number three, being aware that change is possible. Number four, 
seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you look at all the examples of Muslim sisters and brothers who are reverts, people who accept Islam, and they start practicing, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throws in their hearts the seeds of guidance and illumination, and you see that in their faces and in their hearts, change is so easy for them. And if you ask them, how did you give up such and such a habit? How did you get, uh, how, how did you get yourself accommodated to the new situation? It's so difficult. They would answer and they would tell you that it is easy. It is very simple. I found myself, I found my happiness in this path. This is the interpretation of the ayah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى So whoever gives in the case of Allah, in the cause of Allah, and believes in Him, Allah will facilitate him to easiness. He will find his path easy. So we take the opportunity of Ramadan coming soon to change ourselves, to be more patient, to increase our awareness. And before ending up this uh, situation, I would like also to send a message for our brothers and sisters living everywhere. One of the steps, one of the things that must be changed in ourselves is our sensitivity and our sense of attachment to the Muslim community. We find brothers and sisters in Syria now being slain, Muslims in Burma, if you read in the news, People who are killed over there are Muslims. Muslims everywhere in the world are being oppressed. More dua, more support for those brothers, more feeling. Make a share to the others, a share of yourself, a share of your dua, a share of your dedication to others. This is a very important thing that must be changed in our lives. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change us to the best situations and to the best things. Let us move now to some of the questions that we received through the email and the Facebook. The first, the, the brother Prudence Ali, he sent us a couple of questions, five or more questions about one topic, and he's saying, uh, is it permissible for a newly or a Muslim guy to marry a non-Muslim woman. And he's talking about the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited getting married to the mushrikeen or to the unbelievers. Uh, in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited a Muslim man to get married to a non-Muslim woman. A non-Muslim woman is interpreted in the Quran to mean a woman who does not have a divine uh, book or a scripture. So Christians and Jews, Christian women, women and Jewish women are permissible to get married for a Muslim man. So this is the ruling and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained it in the Quran. But the Quran said that وَلَا عَبْدٌ مُؤْمِنٌ خَيْرٌ مِّن مُشْرِكٍ وَلَوْ أَعْجَبَكُمْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said also a Muslim woman is still better than a non-Muslim woman in the sense of Iman, in the sense of Islam, in the sense of manners and behaviors. So, although it is permissible, but it is not recommended, and I strongly advise you, because marriage is an institution which includes bringing up children, and also for the future, in most cases, those types of marriage, sincerely, I advise you that they do not succeed, except if this woman integrates into the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and becomes a believer. So I always advise brothers and sisters to keep themselves away from this, although it is permissible as long as she is a Jewish or a Christian, and provided that she is chaste. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that in the Quran, chaste in the sense that she does not commit adultery and fornication. And this is the way. Uh, the way of making marriage in this case, you talked about or you asked about the civil marriage and registration or making it in the church or in the mosque or through an imam. The conditions or the requirements of marriage or Islamic marriage are well known. 
once they are fulfilled, the marriage becomes valid and there is no problem. And those conditions are, number one, that this marriage must be held in acceptance, in a form of acceptance between the bride and the bridegroom. So the two spouses, uh, the man and the woman, accept this and they express that verbally that she offers or he offers himself as a husband or as a wife and the other party accepts. Number two, the woman must have a wali, a guardian. And if she is a, a disbeliever or her guardians are disbelievers, so she can assign a Muslim man to be her guardian in this case. Number three, there must be two upright and just witnesses who attend the contract. Finally, this contract must be publicized in the sense that it's not secret among people. In addition to having a dowry for this woman, even if it is something which is trivial or something which is uh, very uh, little. These are the basic conditions. If you conclude them in a mosque, there is no problem. If you conclude them in a court, there is no problem. If you conclude them anywhere, uh, there is no problem. Some people, they are just satisfied, satisfied with the civil marriage in the sense of a, a, a registration without having an Islamic legal form of marriage. This is not a legal type of marriage and they must hold it according to the conditions and stipulations that I talk to you. Having it in the church alone without making it in the sense in the Islamic requirements it does not invalidate the Islamic marriage in this case and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. He is asking about also exchanging gifts, talks, and some of the habits. I need to emphasize that in Islam, the relationship between the two persons at the period of engagement, when he proposed for her, there is no dating in Islam. Dating is prohibited in the sense of mingling together and regarding her, her or him having the same rights and obligation of husband and wife. In Islam, those legal rights become valid when the contract is held. So as long as the contract is not held, she is not his wife, he is not her husband. So in this case, it does not allow him to talk about some uh, hidden matters or things which are very sensitive. Or he exchange, even if, so they, they do not build up, it cannot build up. We see some Muslims, for example, when they engage to each other, they exchange visits and they travel together and they spend uh, nights and times together, this is not without having a mahram, without having a close relative. Those all practices which mainly came in a community, uh, in a non-Muslim community, and the Muslims started to practice that imitating those countries or those communities. So this is not a permissible act according to the Sharia of Islam. I hope that I could cover the whole uh, issue with you. There is another question which is raised by Sister Samia Aslam and is sent to us through the Facebook. The question says, I would like to know the correct reference and whether it is Sahih or Da'if and the chain of narration of the following hadith. The Prophet وسلم, said, whoever prays behind the Imam, let him recite Surah Al-Fatiha. Uh, so the, uh, this hadith, whether this is weak or authentic, well, I will ask, answer this question after having this phone call from Brother uh, Abdul Wasi from uh, uh, Emirates. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Abdul Wasi. Wa alaikum, salam, salam, barakatuh, ya shaykh. Barakallahu uh, feekum. I would like to know what is the Islamic view of uh, contract marriage. Of what? Contract marriage. Contract uh, marriage. Hmm. What do you mean by the contract marriage? Uh, the kind of marriage that mostly is in the Western world that they will make a marriage between man and woman that which will maybe for a certain time. You mean for a certain period of time, right? 
Yes. Okay. I will answer your question, inshallah, brother. So, uh, back to this, the, the question of Sister Samia Aslam, and she is asking about the authenticity of this hadith. In fact, there is a hadith of Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, which is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, which the Prophet وسلم, said, إِنَّمَا جُعِلَ الْإِمَامُ لِيُؤْتَمَّ بِهِ The Imam is a sign to be followed by others. And in this hadith, the Prophet وسلم, uh, commanded them actually to recite to the recitation of the Quran. But there is another hadith which is not in that form. This is the hadith when the Prophet ﷺ asked them, do you recite Al-Fatiha while your Imam is reciting Quran? They said, yes. He said, don't do anything, don't recite anything except Al-Fatiha. And this is an authentic hadith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows this. And there is another hadith which the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever does not recite Al-Fatiha during his prayer, his prayer is deficient, is khidaj. Uh, but I did not know the exact wording of the hadith that you mentioned. For Brother Abdul Wasi, temporal marriage, which is restricted to a period of time or to a certain period of time, is prohibited according to the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, according to the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, which the Prophet وسلم, announced at the people of Khaybar that Allah has prohibited the flesh or the meat of the domesticated donkey and also of temporal marriage. This briefly the whole uh, questions ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show his mercy upon all of us and to bring us peace of mind. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Muhammad peace be upon his soul The greatest of prophets Islam was his only goal Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam From among all the prophets Muhammad was the last As his was a mission of the greatest task There was only moral degeneration People clung to idol adoration. Oh.